Welcome back to the Sandpond Saga. Let's get started. Oh, Toad is asleep. Maybe Bird could do the video instead. Welcome back to the Sandpond Saga. Look, what's wrong Bird? You don't want to do the video. That's okay. Let's find someone else instead. videos, we use lots of complicated words, but in this video, let's set the record straight and define what they mean. Welcome back to the Sand Pond Saga. Let's get started. First, let's define what a programming language is. I speak English, UK edition. Unfortunately, my computer does not, but it does speak a bunch of programming languages that I also speak, like HTML, which I used to make this little game. You have to catch all the birds, put them in a cage, and when you've done that, you get a little victory screen. Okay, I didn't just use HTML, that wouldn't work. I used another programming language too, called CSS, to tell the computer what to do. Sorry to interrupt, I'm editing the video right now and I've just realised that HTML is not a real programming language. It's actually a markup language, so when you use it, you're not actually programming, you're markuping instead. So a better example would be a Turing complete programming language like Microsoft PowerPoint. Let's define what a cellular automata is. A cellular automata is where you have cells and you have rules. The rules tell the cells what to do. SandLab is a new cellular automata that I made. Cells follow rules to split, merge and change colour to simulate different elements. Sorry to interrupt again, I'm editing the video and I've just found out that SandLab is not actually a cellular automata, it's an agent-based model. A better example would be something deterministic and fixed like Tetris. Sorry to interrupt again, but I've just found out that Tetris is also not a cellular automata. It's a cellular automaton. A better example would be Tetris multiplayer, because it has multiple cellular automatons in it. Sorry to interrupt again, but I'm realising that these interruptions are making the video take too long. So to speed things up, I've decided to do the next two sections at the same, same time. time. Let's define, define light. intelligence. Intelligence is something that dynamically preserves its pattern. And, and this, this pattern can take many forms. Like Fish Lab. Fish, Fish Lab is an intelligence engine, engine that I made. Fish can swim, swim forwards, forwards and turn up and down. down. They, they grow when they eat a circle and shrink when they eat a square. When they get big enough, they split into two, 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 causing everything about them to mutate, including their brains, which control their intelligent behaviours. Sorry to interrupt again, I'm editing the video right now and I've just realised that these fish are not an example of intelligence. They're actually artificial intelligence because they're just drawings. Sorry, Sorry to, interrupt to interrupt again, again. I'm editing the, I'm video, editing the video, right video right now and I've just, just found out, out that they're, they're not artificial intelligence either because there's, because no, way there's no way of telling if they have a consciousness. consciousness. 
They're actually, They're actually artificial, 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 artificial life. intelligence. Let's define fractal. A fractal is a pattern with infinite detail. No matter how far you zoom in, there's always more to discover. An example of a fractal is a fractal, because no matter how far you zoom in, no matter how much you break it down, no matter how long you do this for, Sorry to interrupt, I'm editing the video right now and I've just realised that a fractal is not a fractal. It's actually a fractal. So a better example of a fractal would be a fractal. Sorry to interrupt again, but I've just realised that a fractal is not a fractal. It's actually a fractal. A better example of a fractal would be a fractal. Sorry to interrupt again, I've just realised that a fractal, well it's not actually a fractal, because if you break it down fully, sorry to interrupt, uh, it's I've actually just realised that a fractal because is not know, actually looking at all of these fractal, things um, technically, in close scrutiny when you go into sorry to fractal, fractal, I've just realised that what you might keep going through that fractal, fractal is not actually fractal. Sorry, I've just realised that the end of the stealth is not actually a fractal. Sorry, I've just realised that the end of the stealth is not actually a fractal. Sorry, I've just realised that the end of the stealth is not actually a fractal. Let's define art. Art is a tool that we use to express ourselves and communicate. Sometimes the art is for other people, and sometimes it's just for you. The art that you make tells us something about you. Personally, I like to play little tunes on the baritone ukulele. It's not meant to be heard by anyone, but it helps me to express how I'm feeling, and I find it quite fun. Sorry to interrupt, I'm editing the video right now and I've just realised that playing the ukulele is not art, it's actually just annoying the neighbours. A real example of art is AI art. So I asked GPT to make some prompts for me, which I gave to Dali and turned into an NFT. I put it on OpenSea and sold it for lots of money. Now that's real art. Define, define. A definition is a tool that we use to express ourselves and communicate. Sometimes the definition is for other people, and sometimes it's just for you. The definition that you use tells us something about you. Personally, I like to use definitions very loosely. But what about you? What definitions do you use?